Good morning and welcome to day four of the Sporting Index preview with our wonderful ambassador, Frankie Vittori. Frankie, good morning. How are you feeling today? A uh, bit disappointed about yesterday, but we can't redo it again. So uh, focusing on today, um, again, oof, very, very tough races throughout the cards, but we're going to go and go through them one by one. Yeah, I mean, the, the hardest thing, I guess, for all of us who might be having a wager today and for you guys riding, it's the ground. Um, it has not stopped raining in London, so I'm probably about 45-minute drive away from Ascot, and I believe it's the same. It has not stopped since 7 p.m. last night, um, and I didn't sleep much last night, so I can tell you that the rain kept me up most of the night. Um, I'm told at the moment it's good to soft, but it's also due to rain all morning, so I should imagine it's going to go soft before racing but uh, i don't know have you heard anything yet no but you know by, by the time we you know we had a big downpour uh, before the last and it was uh, you can tell that the rain was going in so i suspect yeah it will be soft okay um well let's go straight into uh, into the albany the 2 30 today where you ride the favorites for a friend of yours and and, and his mates um ed babington floatus yeah um, I, this was very impressive on debut, so probably a, a worthy favourite um, for Simon and Ed Crisford, 100 to 30 with uh, Sporting. Do, do you know if he'll go on soft? It was soft when she won at Goodwood. Um, I prefer a faster ground. I rode at work. She is very uh, straightforward. Uh, she knows her job. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited to ride her for my friend at Bamington. And uh, I don't know how good the others are. You know, it's some real good good, good potentials in here. But I'm going uh, into the race with uh, something decent and I'm expecting a good run out of her. Wonderful. Is there anything else in the race that you particularly fear or, or know much about? Well, the race back at Philly... LOU was very impressive at Wolverhampton. Maybe it wasn't much of an event. And then you always got to respect uh, the O'Briens, you know, uh, made the run in. Yeah, made the run in and won it well. Yeah, so that the one they stick out for me at the moment. So um, with uh, Sporting Index odds, we, we are actually, it's just gone in from 130 to 3 to 1. We're 3 to 1 floaters. Um, I don't know who's up this morning changing these prices, but someone is. It's, um, it's only 7 a.m. Hello, you, 5 to 1. Pretty is 6 to 1. Oscula, 7 to 1. And then sort of 10 to 1 bar. Let's move on to the 305. I'm not sure you've got a ride in the 305 today, which no, is looking over the 7th. I haven't. I, uh, yeah, quickly at the glance through, the horse who jumps out of the page is uh, Alan Quir, what, you know, beat the derby winner. Uh, done nothing wrong and uh, yeah I mean I, he's got the obvious form and I'm going to stick with that I don't think any of the others are as good as this one Okay so Alan Kerr is a 2-1 to one shot title is 9-2 to two, slight drift today um, in fact the Mediterranean's come into 4-1 to one, Yabir 7-1 to one, and 12 to 1 bar. Um, we won't stay focused on that race as you're not riding it. And we'll move swiftly on to the Commonwealth Cup. Um, love, I, I love this race, actually. And, and I think it was a very good addition when they added it to Ascot um, not that many years ago. Um, here you ride a previous Royal Ascot winner, horse you know well, Campanelle. I don't think would actually mind the ground. No, she won on very soft in the morning. She's a good-looking filly. She she worked quite well on the July course with me. This was always been the target. Um, yeah, she's got a, a prime chance. Uh, I fear the French filly Suesa, and I think if it comes back into form, is the Clive Cox horse. What's his name? Supremacy. Uh, is uh, look. 21 runners. It's not going to be easy, but uh, Wesley always targeted this race for, for a while. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to her. She's, uh, she's a good filly, but it's um, a, tough, a tough race. And are you happy with your draw there at 14? Yeah, I mean, they've been winning from either side. So, yeah, 
yeah, fine. So um, here we've got Sueza is slight, just favourite at four to one, solid four to one, and Campanile nine to two, Dragon Symbol, which Ocean rides is six to one, and then Supremacy ten to one, and it's twelve to one bar really in this race. It looks a very very competitive race, and I hope Campanile continues to give you the good feel has done in last year. Yeah. So. Here we go. The coronation stakes to 420. Um, favorite here is Mother Earth for, for Cornwall. You're on the second favorite. So Mother Earth is four to one. You're on Pretty Gorgeous, which is nine to two. Um, tell us about the race. Well, Pretty Gorgeous, group one winners, a two year old. Uh, you can make your excuses for a reappearance, every ground, first time up. Uh, solid form. But you got to go with Mother Earth. I won the guineas with her. She was second in the French guineas, solid. Uh, she, she, I think she'll take all to beat in. Another one that I do fear is Primo Baccio. was very impressed when she won at York. Uh, you know, competitive race. But those the three will jump out of the page for me. So Primo Baccio is 11 to 2. Um, so 4 to 1 Mother Earth. Nine to two, pretty gorgeous, and Prima Baccio eleven to two, um, which is ridden by Andrea. Now we will move on. So, so the group races are done for today, and we'll move on to the five o'clock, which is um, Sandringham okay. Phillies um, stakes. And here another ridiculously competitive betting <laughs> heat. I mean, I, will, I mean, I've honestly, you in this race. Um, um, have you? Yeah, I do. Um, strange enough, it's um, owned by uh, Mr. Babington again. This one. Um, the which was that? It's ten to one. The field. It's um, Ed's involved in a horse with Hugo Palmer called Glasgow Girl, which is an eleven to one shot. Um, but uh, Ryan's um, ten to one favourite on Friendly, but it literally is ten to one, eleven to one. The first. Honestly, I, I had a look at it this morning. I, I'm scratching my head. Uh, my my feel is okay. You know, I mean, the, the, there's a lot of horses at the bottom that is sneaked in with some good weights, like the very horse is also going go eight two, Roger Charlton's go eight three. So it's a, a lot of weight to to get, especially if the grounds turn soft. So yeah, um, tough, very tough. I haven't got an opinion on this. Uh, will, will your will yours um, will she like a soft ground? Yeah, she will mind it. Uh, obviously, if you my form ties up with Primo Baccio, so if Primo Baccio does well, will give me a bit more confidence for the Sangria. Well, that, that's a tip in itself. Let's see how that runs, and and it might, you'll definitely get nibbled at if Primo Baccio has a good run. So on to the five thirty-five, um, which is the Duke of Edinburgh. Have you any views here? It's another. <laughs> Fives the field handicap. Um, you're on Sam Cook. Uh, no, you're not on Sam. You're on Grand Bazaar. Um, yeah. In my horse is uh, very honest. Tries really hard. Uh, you know, these uh, four-year-old and up handicaps of a mile and a half are so competitive. Uh, if you, you can throw five in the, into the hat. I mean, it's really, really difficult. I've not got no opinion. Can you help me on this? I can actually. Um, so where I've, been, uh, <laughs> I, where I've been all week, um, I bumped into a chap who uh, who's in charge and founded Chelsea Thoroughbreds, uh, Richard Morecambe, the other day. Yeah. And Sam, he, Sam he Cook. Big, yeah, so he had a big smile on his face. And he said, uh, Chief, our horse has just managed to scrape into this race on Friday. Um might go okay. He basically broke 16 to 1 out of me, and it's now 8 to 1 with us. It was a sneaky oh. maneuver by Mr. Morgan. But um, I've done a bit more research in, since, and we'll like the ground, and obviously, well weighted. But listen, still, it's, it's got a lot of horses to beat. So, uh, anyway, good luck to him, and uh, a great bit of breaking by uh, Richard Morgan there to, to me. Um, I don't think you've got a light run in the last, have you got a ride in the no. last? No, no. So the, I fancy if I have to pick one, Andrea, Unshallah, 
Boom Shalalala, um, which is a six to one shot. So the last is another one of these races has been added. Palace of Holyrood has stakes. Um, Boom Shalala is a 11 to two shot. Equality is six to one. Warrior Brave 13 to two. It is ultra, ultra competitive. Um, one thing I want to tell everyone is that we won't be um, doing one of these tomorrow uh, for one reason or another, but I did um, I did want to get something out of you. Um, you've got a horse, uh, you, I think your last ride of the meeting tomorrow is the Dermot Weld, the Chester Cup winner, uh, Falconate, is it? Um, yeah, it was always, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, he's probably one of my best rides tomorrow. He stays the distance, and uh, he uh, it was always the target running in this race. He's got uh, enough uh, quality to do well, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I have to say I was very impressed with this in, in the Chester Cup because you, you had to be very patient, and Chester's not a great place to have to weave yourself through 20-odd horses that you had to do in yeah. the Chester Cup and absolutely bolted up. Um, Frankie, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you so much for being with us all week. Um, good luck for Friday and Saturday. Um, we're cheering you on. And particularly thank you for coming on in such good humour today, because I know yesterday was disappointing. Um, for everyone else, um, please remember if you're spread betting that um, your losses may exceed your deposit. If you're doing fixed odds betting, please get, well, if you're doing any form of betting, please gamble responsibly. We are 18 plus and be gambleaware.org. Um, good luck, everyone. Look for soft ground horses, hopefully, and I think we might be in for a few surprises. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Frankie. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.